Hello YouTubes, this is Grimweird, back with more Enigmatica 2 expert playthrough action. Um, me and my avatar, Zombie Steve, here are, uh, have been busy in between episodes. I'm um, just doing a little renovating and uh, sort of getting some things set up. So let me show you what we got going on. So um, I think at the end of our last episode we had gone to the nether um, and we wanted to sort of set that base up a bit better. Um, and when we came back, we had so much inventory crap that it took our somewhat uh, ugly inventory situation and turned it downright uh, unworkable. So we finally got around to making a bunch of storage drawers. So here they are. So what I've got going on here is my pickaxe uh, uses Global Traveler trait to automatically throw things into this crate, which hoppers down into the controller. This controller we got as one of the uh, loot crate rewards, and then that spreads things out. Over on the right side, I've got a, a bank of compacting drawers for things that come back, compact down from, you know, like cobblestone to compressed to double compressed. And then over on the left, I have a bunch of other stuff that uh, ends up being uh, mined by uh, my pickaxe. And that, I've just been coming down the ladder with my inventory full just throwing it in here and letting it all sort of spread out once the uh once we get this all sort of populated i'll start uh you know organizing it you can see the start of that organization here um, we've got the little keyholes where there are little keyholes if you're not familiar with storage drawers it's where i've used the drawer key to lock the drawers into only carrying what they are carrying so i'm going to gather my six thumb craft um uh, crystals up in this corner with glowstone and glowstone bricks broken and unbroken there so that will always be there so then if anything new comes along it won't just sort of fill in an empty spot because right now anything new that comes in the controller just fills in the closest spot that's empty but not everything needs to go into these drawers um, so obviously there's no rhyme or reason here but like we'll gather all the ores into one spot and lock those drawers up uh, we'll gather all the various stones into one spot and lock those up uh, but for right now I'm just sort of throwing stuff in there and letting it fall where it may um, just to get things rolling the other key I made for this um, again if you're not familiar with storage drawers is the uh, quantify key um, so that just I can click on the controller and uh, affect all drawers at once or I can do them separately and that just quantifier tells you what the number are there and I really like to be able to see that number the other thing I did was again this um, I am not an expert at modern Minecraft but uh, I did want to uh, do this just to force myself to go into a lot of different mods that I hadn't used before so one of the things I hadn't used before was the framing table for storage drawers um, so the framing table is just made out of trim, um, which is basically a drawer that doesn't have any drawer. So it's really cheap to make and doesn't require a chest, but you can use it as a connector. So for instance, I've got a bunch of drawers here. Um, this controller does not control these drawers because they are not connected. But I could throw down a piece of trim if I wanted to, um, to connect these drawers. But uh, that framing table, what it does is you can put some framed drawers in there. And so if we go at storage, so you got to make the special framed ones. So these are framed half drawers, two by two. Um, and when you make these framed ones, you can then throw them on the framing table and then throw other blocks on there and copy the texture of those blocks onto there. You can do it on three sections. You can keep, keep it separate where the outside edge, the drawer edge, and then the face edge um, are all different types of textures. I just went ahead and made these all seared brick um, just so it would fit in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take any of my processed dusts so the ores will get um, sent to this box and sent to the controller and sent to their drawers. But then when I take those out and crush them, um, I'll load them up over here so that they're near my smelter and ready to roll. Um, and again, I like having the numbers there so I can just see how much of each thing I got. And I'll just fill this up alphabetical with the uh, 
sort of the normal ones. So, you know, the um, aluminum, copper, gold, iron, um, on down through uranium. Um, and then over on the second one, I'll probably have like one crate dedicated to the uh, nuclear craft, um, lithium, magnesium, boron, etc. And then I'll probably throw some other dusts in here too, um, like pulverized charcoal and uh, pulverized obsidian and stuff like that when I get it. And uh, once I get those and get this all sorted out the way I like it, I'll lock them so that if I ever empty one out, I'll know what goes back into it. And I can show you that real quick. So the little keyhole shows that this one's been locked. And what happens is if I go ahead and take all of the blue crystals out, it doesn't free it up and make it blank again. It just leaves it there and calls it zero. So that way you know what goes back into it when you get some more. So that's what I'll do with these dust drawers as well. So the other thing you can see is that I uh, moved uh, my Tinker stuff down here and got it sort of organized. Um, I can actually pull a lot of this stuff from here while playing at this table. Um, so I find this to be sort of good, but still leaving myself a walkway here for stuff. Um, I hope to get uh, an enchantment called Block Reach um, on my stuff, and then I'll be able to reach all of this stuff while I'm standing here at my tables. Um, we also put in some lighting and a ceiling. So um, I had decided that uh, since I went with a short smelter, I'm sort of going smelter light because I know I'm going to be getting into more complicated uh, automation and machines in the future. Uh, and so I didn't need a really tall room for my eight story tall um, smelter. So I decided to, you know, take this vein mined cavern that we're working in and calling home and split it into uh, two levels. So I put in a ceiling slash floor and so sort of have a second floor started. I found out I have a little lake here. I might turn that into a fishing spot. Sometimes uh, in past bases, um, I've left myself a little fishing spot underground so I can cast my uh, fishing rod a few times while I'm waiting for machines to chug around. And probably what I'm going to put on this floor is um, some power generation and then drop wires, um, immersive engineering wires, relay them down downstairs um, where I start adding more uh, more machines and stuff down here. So we're just going to sort of finish things as we fill them up and sort of spread out into this space and I'll sort of finish it and divide it into rooms as I go. Um, I also put in some lighting. I got two kinds of lighting going on here. I got um, unbroken sea lanterns. They provide some good light, however the hue may look good underwater, but it's sort of a sickly blue. Um, so it reminds me of like a 1970s hospital or like an old office building where you're stuck in a basement under fluorescent lights. Um, so we'll change those out to something a little more um, aesthetically pleasing once we have the ability to make some better lights. The other thing we can do is you can sort of see if I stand back here that the uh, floor is glowing a bit here. You'll notice I don't have a lot of uh, torches on the floor. So the other thing I've got going on is that's a jack-o'-lantern. The thing I like about the jack-o'-lanterns, I think I mentioned it earlier when I stole these from a village, is that you can put them in the floor as a light source and carpeting does not dim the light source. So I've got a couple jack-o'-lanterns, like one in here, uh, one in here, and one in here, just again to help sort of brighten up our underground layer. And I really like this carpet. This is the green carpet uh, that I stole from the Immersive Engineering house. It usually looks like this, green wool, which is sort of a sickly looking color of green. But when you chisel it, uh, turn it into carpet and chisel it, it turns into, I think, a very pleasant shade of green. So yeah, things are looking up. Uh, we've actually got some uh, starting to look more homey. Uh, so I'll continue to work on getting this all sorted. And then the other thing we're going to do, actually I might just be able to teleport there, boink. I hope I remembered to set this to the nether, I think I did. My sword, yes. Okay, so the other thing we got going on is, um, I think at the end of the last one, uh, that bat is still here, I think at the end of the last one um, I had 
uh, made my pillbox and I wanted to try and grab some cobalt um, real quick so I ran out there uh, but it quickly became ugly we had gas and, and uh, blazes all shooting at us so like any sensible Minecraftian veteran um, I uh, decided not to hang out in the open and dug a pit they don't call it Minecraft for no reason so I did some mining I've quickly learned that vein miner in the nether is really dangerous for me because I don't pay enough attention and and I'm not used to it since this is really the first mod pack I've ever used vein miner in um, and so I wanted to be standing on something other than nether rack as I was digging around um, so I decided to just make myself a little path here and that way if I ever blew up all the nether rack I was standing on I wouldn't fall to my death uh, we were able to come out here and snag some glowstone and some flesh and uh, we started getting some ores we definitely got all the uh, cobalt and ardite we're going to need for the near future um, I just sort of came down here and this all went pretty quick because I just blew it all up with vein miner um, so yeah we've got some uh, stuff going on there I need to remember to start gathering up uh, as much Certus Quartz as I can so that we're good to go when, uh, when we start working on Applied Energistics. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we got some stuff going on here. Uh, so that allowed us to, if we take a look at our quest book, um, that allowed us to cross off the uh, cobalt and the manulin um, one, and then we already, of course, had Osglow glass from that reward. So we're all the good, to go, all good to go. We're all the way up to uh, uh, Indurium, Indurium, um, which we're not going to make quite yet. I think to really get that, we're going to need to alloy it from lead, platinum, and resonant Ender. And I think to get resident ender, we're going to have to uh, make a plasma or a magma crucible. Um, so as soon as we get a magma crucible, um, that's probably the first thing of all of these that we're going to get. So as soon as we get a magma crucible, we can move on to that one. But we should be able to uh, uh, mine everything we want to mine right at the moment. So um, sometime in an upcoming episode, we will be uh, trying to uh, find another fortress. Um, I glanced around out the windows real quick. I don't see anything real obvious. Um, usually you can see the little straight lines of walkways. We might have one over here. It's hard to tell. Um, but uh, I've got so much stuff to still to do in the, uh, in the uh, overworld that I haven't spent a lot of time playing around and looking around here yet. I just did a quick smash and grab of um, a bunch of ore um, and then moved on. But um, so that's where we're at there. So if we uh, teleport back to our base. What else do we have to do today? Um, I didn't really prepare too much. I was sort of playing around. I got carried away with setting up the basement and setting up my storage drawers. So gates, um, extra utilities, we've got that. We've got our ineffable glass. Um, golden lassos, we could make golden lassos. At least get that loot case out of the way for us um, so the golden lasso is going to be handy I'm going to make actually a pair of them so that um, I can go grab um, two cows and I'll bring that mating pair of cows home and I'll set up somewhere around here. I will set up a, uh, a little pasture. I don't like to listen to the cows uh, mooing. So I might set the pasture up a ways away from our base. Because it's not like I'm going to be spending a ton of time there. 
Um, so I'll set up a little pasture and that's going to be, uh, it'll end up being our um, industrial foregoing or thermal foregoing, whatever it is. Uh, pink slime farm. A scanner. Hey, I knew I didn't want to make those because I knew I'd get one eventually and I don't have a way to charge it quite yet. So this is actually going to cross off, I think, a couple more things. We'll claim that. And rare ores. Um, I think this is just a checkbox. Yeah. You have to um, explore the galaxy to find some of these other ones. So that might be some sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe the dimensional stuff or the advanced rocketry um, to go find that kind of garbage. But we'll just do that. That's done. Overclocker upgrades for industrial uh, craft too. Uh, I like it. Those are going to be handy. Gave me 12 of them. I'll take that. All right, so other things. Um, let's see. We need to see what else we need to open because uh, it's definitely fun getting loot crates. Um, so mechanism. We really need to get mechanism rolling for mechanism. Uh, we are going to... Oh, you may have noticed that downstairs I tore up my uh, coke oven and blast furnace. I've, I'm up to uh, three stacks of steel, which is going to get me a ways down the line. In fact, that may be all I need to uh, make it to um, doing something a little bit more advanced, like using um, various uh, tech level two things to uh, create steel blend with, you know, putting a enriched coal powder into iron powder or however that works. I forget exactly, but uh, we'll probably be doing something like that. Um, this, uh, so if going on in immersive engineering, I do want to do some more stuff with this. I want to make these. Um, so I'll probably gather up the requirements for this. And next time we'll make those and set them up. That'll be a good uh, thing for next episode. Um, so we can get some power going. Uh, the improved blast furnace, I don't really need those. And... Uh, um, but I'll probably do them just to get the loot chests. And uh, we've already made, we may have made some of those. If not, we can make more. We actually do need to get to heavy engineering blocks, so we will need to make all this stuff and get credit for it anyway um, so that we can move on through a gate. I think heavy engineering blocks are required for something that we need to make. So yeah, we'll probably I'll probably gather up all the resources and components to bash out uh, three or four of these things for um, sometime in the near future. Uh, Thumbcraft, we still have the need to do this. I can make it a bit of the way into Thumbcraft, but I'm still waiting on uh, green crystals. I uh, haven't spotted any of those yet. Uh, Astral Sorcery, um, we could. Uh, I'll gather up the things for this so that uh, we can um, go and make probably have all of this stuff right now. Um, actually, let's take a look. Maybe that's something to do. I'm probably about halfway time-wise through this episode anyway. Maybe we just go make this junk. i got to make Salus Mundus, but I need to make that for Thumbcraft anyway. So yeah, let's work on that stuff real quick. So we are going to need... The Salus Mundus is something like... Let's see, I think it tells us in this information tab. Three viz crystals of different types and combine them with redstone dust by crafting them with a flint and a bowl. So we're going to need a bowl. Doink, we've got bowls. Uh, flint, I may have moved them downstairs already. Yes. Um, redstone, I got that downstairs. Crystals, I've got that downstairs. Let's make some Salus Mundus. Sounds a bit dirty. Salus Mundus, the forbidden dance of love. 
All right, so redstone, we got, uh, grab some of that. Flint. We'll have to get all this organized here soon, but uh, we got flint. Um, and then I've definitely got a ton of the um, yellow ones, so we'll use those. I'm going to go ahead and make multiple recipes of this because I need some for the resonating wand for astral sorcery. I'm going to need some for my uh, Thumbcraft quests, so I'm probably going to make, I don't know, three or four of these. Um, all right, so there we go. And we're off. All right, so we need a bowl, and that's reusable. We need a flint, and I think that's reusable. Uh, and then we would need three different types of crystals. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. That's probably enough for now. Um, and then, what, am I, what else do I need? For the resonating one, I'm going to need two marble and two aquamarines. Actually, we're going to leave the ender pearls alone and we're going to make this one. So two aquamarines and two marble. And then for, oops. And then for the resonating table, or the luminous crafting table, we're going to need six marble and a sooty marble. I made a sooty marble. And let's go ahead and grab one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, with a couple extra of everything just in case. Because I don't want to run over there and then uh, not have what I need. And then we're going to need a spare crafting table, which I have that upstairs. And then I've marked on my map, I just remembered that uh, I usually have a, a floating crystal pretty close to where I am, uh, have my base, or I did, you know, I've started a couple worlds. Um, in this one, in this particular case, it is off in the distance, I believe. So we'll have to take a look at the map and see how far away that was. Um, floating crystal on. Holy cow. Oh, there it is. It's not too bad. Yeah, we can get over there real quick. Let's gear up from certain travel. We're going to get our glider out. And our slim, slime sling out. And we got plenty of daylight on us, so away we go. That's not bad at all. We have to get a little more altitude, but uh, oops, just jump up here. That's not too far at all with the uh, with the glider. So to make this stuff, to make the your starting resonating wand, which I think is the first thing you got to do, um, you need starlight. And so what you do is you come down here and you put your crafting table down. Oh, I should have brought two crafting tables. I probably have one on me as well. Yes, I do. Um, so you're going to put your crafting table down here. And now you see this beam of light going to the crafting table. So that now means that this crafting table is energized enough for us to make the wand. So if we go resonating wand. Oh, I forgot to bring up, pick up the aquamarines. I always forget something. Um, all right, we'll jump cut and I will be right back. 
Okay, I teleported back to the base and glided back over. Uh, didn't take hardly any time at all, so that's good. Love having the slime sling and the uh, glider. So, bang, we've got a resonating wand. Show me the money. Claim. See if we got anything good. Uh, resonant conversion kit. I will take that. Um, I actually really like, um, I tried for the first time, um, Thermal Foundations energy cells, which are basically just big old battery. And I really liked them, and they were really upgradable, and they were enchantable, and so you could turn them into huge, huge, huge batteries, which made me happy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that into my offhand for now, um, and that will help guide us towards the, uh, what do they call them? That'll help guide us towards the uh, rock crystal ores at night. I'm down around bedrock level. The first thing we'll do is go see if there's any near our base. But let's go ahead and bash out this uh, table too. So we need the luminous, luminous crafting table. So we got everything for that. Bang. Show me the good stuff new chest so I think now that we have this this puts us on the road of uh, doing further stuff on at our own base um, I might make a little tower and put this up at the top of the tower um, just for fun and giggles um, while I'm here let me take a look at this we have everything to make uh, this, I believe, So, uh, except for the yellow niter. So I need to get Thumbcraft moving so I can make yellow niter, so that I can make um, these cave illuminators. Because those are sort of fun. You can set them up at ground level, and they will just uh, light up everything underneath them. So that's really handy when you're exploring or, say, looking for green Thumbcraft <laughs> crystals or things like that. So I definitely want to make that, which means I definitely need to uh, get moving on Thumbcraft as well. I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. I don't know if we need these floating crystals ever again. I think from now on we just do all our own thing, but I'm not really familiar. I haven't gotten that far into astral sorcery. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, just leave that there in case I need it again so I don't wander off and forget it. So I've got that resonating wand in my offhand, and I want to. it's getting dark, which is fine. Because I want to actually see if I spot any thing. Uh, there's some right over there. So you can sort of see, um, if you're not familiar with this mod, you can sort of see um, those uh, white lines, hazy lines, coming up out of the ground over here. And that means that down at around bedrock level, there is some rock crystals that we need to gather for more fun. Let's just get up there so we can take a better look at them. Boink. So yeah, um, and if we look around, especially at night, we'll probably be able to see more of these. I don't know what the range is on them, but uh, it seemed reasonably good. Um, and since I'm here, I'm going to go down to this cave and pick up the crystals that I saw in here. And then glance down this path and see if there's any crystals down here. No. So I still need to find some green crystals, so I think instead of teleporting back to the base, I will uh, pause here and then fly back to the base. And while I'm flying back to the base, I will uh, see if I see any green lights off in the distance. 
So we will pause here and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so I did a quick fly around um, the base on the way back, looking for any glowing green crystals on the side of a hill. Um, I did want to show you that uh, while I was flying around in the dark, these, uh, maybe if I come up here, I might get shot by a skeleton, but if you come up here uh, with the resonating wand in hand at night when it gets really dark, you can see we got all sorts of those things. They're like, maybe even like, you know, one every three or four chunks. So we got some there, and some there, and some there. And uh, if we uh, uh, if we go downstairs, we may already be close to a rock crystal or two. So we'll just check that real quick and then call it an episode. So yep, I can see one right there already. So down here at bedrock level, if you look around, it's a little bit harder to see, um, but we definitely got something going on off here in the distance. Um, and what the heck. I think I'm already at a half an hour for this video, but let's go see if we can actually dig our way to this one. There it is, rock crystal ore. So this is the bad boy that we want to uh, break. And I guess we'll go ahead and do that. My uh, my uh, slime hammer is only up to luck two. I think you can actually. Let me just double check that. Um, rock crystal. Um, so let's see what was I gonna do. Oh. Just going to try and see if it, uh, sometimes there's a little pick pickaxe symbol and it will tell you if, uh, what your chances of getting more of them are for the various levels of loot. Oh, we've actually got two here. That's actually a score. And we picked up four, so I think, uh, I think absolutely, uh, looting helped there because when I tried this before without looting, I was getting two or three per. Now I got four and three, so yeah, looting may be helping. So we have got a ton of those already, so that's good news. And it was easily gettable from our base. All right, so uh, we got to check our loot crates. This is one from the table, I believe. We got greenhouse glass. Okay. Greenhouse is something I probably won't get around to doing for a long time since I'm more of a miner than a farmer. Uh, but I know I will have to farm eventually to get some of the stuff. So we'll hold on to that for later. And did I get an upgrade? Yes, I get an upgrade for rock crystals. So we will claim that loot chest. And see what we got. Razor wire, eh, whatever. Okay, so not too exciting there, uh, but uh, 64 razor wire. I'll figure out something to do with that, I guess. Um, nothing else I can recycle it for steel. <laughs> Actually be a decent amount of steel if I have an arc furnace going. So um, let's see. So that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, we made some progress on some real progress on astral sorcery, opening that up. Um, so now uh, the grindstone is another. If you're if you're looking for some ore doubling, that can be another way to uh, get some ore doubling going. Um, I think that it uh, it's cheap to make. Um, it's um, I think fairly uh, automated, sort of like the small press plate where you basically got to right click on it a bunch of times. But I also think that it, um, it uh, grinds a few things that aren't gr normally ground by other things like the, uh, you know, some of the other pulverator, pulverizers, macerators, etc. So whenever I have something that I want to turn from like an ore or a solid into a dust, I have a tendency to... Um, I have a tendency to um, check all of those. 
So if we were to look at, where is diamond dust? So like diamond dust, um, one of my recommendations if you're pretty new to modded Minecraft is uh, we see that, you know, there's one way to make it by crafting, which is combining lots of little stuff. But you can also go and take a look at here and see, you know, which of these other machines might give you a better yield. So one ore will give you one dust with an 85% chance of a second. If we look at the crusher um, for mechanism, one diamond, which if you have looting, you might be able to turn the ore into a couple diamonds, and then that'll give you two dust. Um, so there's lots of different ways to get that dust, and in this case, um, something like like this shows me that you know nether diamond ore is going to be a good thing for getting dust so i'll have to watch for that when i'm in the nether um, pulverizer macerator um, there's lots of different this is one that's pretty quick to get to so we're going to make that real quick and it's pretty good again though if you have um if you have looting on whatever you're breaking that diamond ore with you might be getting two or more anyway um, but anyway, it's the, the diamond, it, it appears not to, to be too helpful to do other machines. But whenever you're making uh, any kind of dust like that, since there are so many machines that will do it, uh, it behooves you to um, check around and see which machine you have will give you the best yield. And on that note, um, I think I'm over time for this video, so we're going to stop there. Um, I showed you some drawers. I showed you the ceiling and the carpet. Um, I showed you that we did a little mining in the nether and got our, um, got our uh, cobalt and ardite and made some anulin and uh, proceeded with these. I didn't show you what I took, so let me tell you that real quick. On this level, I wasn't too thrilled with any of these choices. Uh, I basically took the evil-infused broadaxe head because I know I can melt the evil-infused um, chunk. So I went ahead and took that, but I don't really have any use for it yet. Um, and then for this level, I took the Prudentium Excavator Head. Uh, emeralds are easy to get, but Prudentium isn't. And that's another one where I know I can melt the uh, Excavator Head and get a couple ingots, I think, of um, Prudentium that I could then put on something else if I need to, or if I need some Prudentium ingots for some recipe. Anyway, that's enough for today. Um, I will uh, get a bunch more things queued up. Um, we're going to queue up a bunch of Thumbcraft for next time. Um, try and bust through um, some of these. Um, in between, I might go look for a great wood tree and a silver wood tree and some green crystals and some rubber trees. I still need rubber trees for our, our industrial craft um, when we open that up. So probably in between episodes, that's what I'm going to do is go look for... Um, green vis crystals and silver wood and great wood and get all the stuff prepped up for working on um, start starting up with thumbcraft all right i will talk to you later bye